Earth Science students. This is video number two in your introduction to the New York State Mesonet. In video number one, we looked at the Mesonet network around New York State, and we looked at the different weather instruments that are installed at the different Mesonet stations. And now we're going to look specifically at the Red Hook Station and the kind of weather information we can get from there and how we interpret it. So when you come onto the website, this is what you will see. And we are going to go here to weather. And I'm just going to quickly show you maps. Okay, there's all different kinds of maps you can look at. Here's air temperature, moisture, dew point, air pressure, solar radiation, winds, precipitation. These are all uh, different um, lengths of time that the data has been collected, soil conditions, so lots of great data here for you to look at. For your lab, we're going to focus on the current and forecast data and on the meteograms. So let's start with the uh, meteograms. Okay, so you'll want to have chosen your station. I've chosen Red Hook so that you can look at the meteogram for your particular location. Now everybody loves a graph rather than looking at a bunch of numbers data table. So the graph makes it easy to uh, see what's going on, particularly when it's nicely color-coded the way it is. So I'm just going to point out a few features of these graphs. Uh, the first one on the top here is temperature. We're going to look at the temperature data at the 2 meter uh, temperature, which is in sort of a pink color here, and the dew point, which is in green. Those are the two that I want you to look at because they're the easiest ones to see. And here on the um, y-axis, you've got your degrees in Fahrenheit, 30, 40, and you'll see here this dashed line in the middle here, this dashed blue line is your 32 degree temperature line, which is uh, the freezing line. So anything below that would be below freezing. Anything above that is above freezing. So that's a good reference point. And it shows about uh, 24 hours of data. So we're starting here. This is uh, yesterday um, around noon. And it's going all the way to today around noon. So you get a full 24-hour picture of what's been happening at this particular weather station. So in this case, in Red Hook. Now the first thing you'll notice was that yesterday, around this time, at noon, um, the, the, red the red area, which is the temperature, was in the 40s, maybe in the 50s, up high here. And if you scroll over it, it will tell you exactly the different temperatures. So you can see the 2 meter temperature was 47. The 9 meter was also about 47 um, in around noon yesterday. What has what was different yesterday around noon is the green line. The green line is your dew point. And I hope you remember that the dew point is the temperature at which water vapor will condense into liquid water. So if the temperature in yesterday was high in the 40s, but our dew point down here our dew point was only 27 degrees. So around noon yesterday it was 45, 47, but the dew point was only 27. So there was a 20 degree difference between the temperature in the air and the dew point. Now that means it wasn't raining because you, in order for you to get that condensation and get rain, the temperature and the dew point have to be very close together if not the same. And so you can see as the afternoon wore on yesterday, the dew point started to climb. So right around here we were at 35 degrees and it was right about here. So maybe in around 4 or 5 p.m. 
4, 4.25 p.m. that we're really starting to see the green line, which is dew point, being almost exactly the same as the pink line. So our temperature dropped a little bit, but our dew point came up, and right here, from here on, temperature and dew point are the same which means it's been raining. I can tell exactly when it started raining. Must have been right about here. And it's been raining, raining, all night it's been raining, all morning it's been raining. So this is a good example of how temperature and dew point are related. When they're close together, it means you're going to be getting precipitation. When they're far apart, you are not going to be getting precipitation. So I don't even need to look at the forecast to know that it's raining outside and that it started raining yesterday steadily around 4.30 p.m. Now the graph underneath here, this, this one, has wind speed on it. And what's interesting is you can see the blue shows you sort of your gusty, the gusts of wind. Um, and so you can tell that, you know, there were some, some pretty good gusts right around noon yesterday. And that right, you know, this early morning between 4 and 6 a.m., it wasn't particularly uh, gusty. But what's a little tricky to read on this is, and, oh, and sorry, the, the miles per hour here in the wind speed is on the left y-axis. But if you go over to the right y-axis, this shows you your wind direction. And they, it's an interesting way of doing it on a graph. There's north at the bottom, east above it, then south, then west, and then north again at the top. And all of these little dots, these little uh, white and orange dots, uh, show you readings of wind direction. So what you can notice on this is over here yesterday, our wind was coming pretty much out of the west in the um, early afternoon. And then as the afternoon wore on into evening, it jumped up here to be much more straight north winds, right? They're right along the north up there. And since then, since about midnight, it's been north, but a little more northeast. Okay, so you see all these Northeast, what does that tell you? Okay, we're getting northeast winds with this uh, rainstorm that is happening right now. Remember, that let's if we look how the comparison here, ever since it started raining heavily, we've had northeast winds um, pretty consistently. This brown graph is our air pressure, barometric pressure in millibars. So yesterday around noon, before it had started raining, raining, we were about 10, 13 millibars, which you know is about average for sea level air pressure. And since then, though, you see a steady decline. There was a little bump around 8 p.m., but then it's been dropping, dropping, dropping. And around 6 a.m., we hit our low um, air pressure, which was 1,009 millibars. And it's been... I say climbing a little bit, it's still pretty low and we're still getting a lot of rain. So you remember that low pressure means stormy weather, rainy weather, humid weather, and that's exactly what we're seeing here with this air pressure bar. Um, this orange one shows our solar insulation, our incoming solar radiation, or basically a measure of sunlight. Now this is going to be affected by two things. One, cloud cover. So you see at noon yesterday there was um, not as much cloud cover as we're seeing today at noon because it hadn't really started raining that much yet. So the clouds weren't as thick so more sunlight was getting through. Uh, for the same time today we have much much less solar insulation coming in because our cloud cover is much thicker. And of course, the second reason is from between 7, uh, 7 p.m. to about 7 a.m., we got no incoming solar radiation. I wonder why. Well, it was nighttime, so we won't expect any sunlight in the, in the nighttime. And this graph down here, which we already knew from looking at our dew point uh, data up above, we already knew 
that we started raining right here, right about when the dew point and the uh, temperature were uh, about the same. Does, is that correct? Yes, right around here is when we started picking up the heavy rain. This is our precipitation in inches. And um, this, this light green line here is your relative humidity. And you see that ever since about 4, 4.30 p.m. yesterday, relative humidity has been 100%, 100%, 100% all the way across which is what we would expect if it's raining, and it has been raining pretty steadily uh, since about 4.30 yesterday. And you can see over here the inches of rain that have accumulated. So um, it's been getting uh, almost half an inch of rain in the last 24 hours. So those are the past weather data, and it will give you your past 24 hours. Now let's look at the current data. So if you go to weather and current data, you'll get um, information on sunrise and sunset times, moonrise, moonset, and uh, the phase of the moon. Those will become important when we do astronomy. And here's all the instant data that's been collected Now, the, uh, for right now. The Mesonet connects, collects the data every five minutes. So this is constantly updating, and you can see at 10.35 it took this picture, and this will update again every five minutes so you can get a, a sense of what the weather actually looks like. So right now we're at 99% relative humidity, uh, dew point 45 degrees, and look at, look at that. Our temperature also 45 degrees, so our dew point and our temperature are exactly the same which means we have, um, you know, 100% relative humidity, and it is raining. Our winds are out of the east at 5 miles per hour. And if we look at our soil data, at the different soil meters that we have, 2 inches, 10 inches, 20 inches, you'll notice the temperature underground is also very warm, almost as warm as it is in the air, 44 degrees. This is important for uh, snowfall. If it were snowing right now and, this, and the ground were 44 degrees, it would not stick, it would melt as soon as it hit the ground. So basically this is telling us our ground is not frozen and any frozen precipitation that fell would not stick very long. It would melt right away. This information is also good for gardeners and farmers. Um, I'm looking at starting my garden pretty soon, but my, the plants I want to grow and the seeds that I want to germinate in my garden need to be need a temperature of about 60 degrees. So it's too early, based on this data, for me to go out and plant my vegetable garden. Underneath that, you have what I call the weather for dummies. Okay, so this is a quick uh, synopsis of the weather forecast for the next few days, but you can do a lot better than that. Um, looking at the actual real data. So underneath that is this is now the forecast. Okay, so this is going into the future and they are predicting here the blue is our precipitation that it's going to continue to rain for a lot of today but then um, it should, should start to dry out overnight and then hopefully by uh, um, Monday morning it'll be much less rain and by Tuesday looks like they're predicting it to be uh, drier and no more precipitation. This um, red line is your temperature and the dashed gray line above it is your cloud cover. So you can see that um, as the, the, the clouds are going to stay it's going to stay pretty cloudy for the next few days, but the temperature is going to go up and down, and this is mostly due to our incoming solar radiation, so we'll be lower at night okay, in the early morning hours and warmer uh, at midday. So you'll have a chance in your lab to look at all of these different graphs and compare, again, temperature and dew point on here as we go through. 
wind speed is at the bottom and these are little arrows like on your station models that show which direction the wind was coming uh, from. So in this case your wind here, uh, your wind direction would be from the north northeast whereas this one here would be from the southeast. Okay, So the little arrow is just like you would draw on your station model. As we go further down here you have uh, precipitation potential, the sky cover, and the relative humidity in green. So you want to keep an eye on the relative humidity. Um, it looks like it's going to be dropping so that by Tuesday we should be down at about 50 percent relative humidity which is not as much um, potential for rain as we are up here where we're at 80, 90, uh, percent up here right here 100 percent relative humidity uh, means it's definitely raining and sky cover probably tracks along with that the more clouds you have the more chance you have of um, precipitation and down here on the last one is a uh, weather uh, rain likely how much rain it's either going to be slight chance, chance, likely, or definitely. So you can see they're, they're calling it likely for a lot of um, today, Monday, and into a little bit of Tuesday, it starts to drop off. Interesting here, though, in red is thunder. So it looks like we have a potential for some thunder, rumbles of thunder um, later today, which would be interesting to hear. We'll keep an eye out for that. So these are your forecast details and how to find the information that you need here under weather. Current and forecast is the current and future weather and the meteograms gives you your last 24 hours of weather. So I hope that helps you um, get a start on your lab and good luck with that and pick a good location and have some fun exploring the New York State Mesonet uh, information. See you later.